it's Belle from Belle's Book Reviews again, but today we're going to be doing something a little different than reviewing a book. Today we're going to be debunking myths, in other words, we'll be looking through or comparing and contrasting Disney movies versus the original fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen and the Grimm Brothers. Also, this video is not made for kids, so if you have or are a child who still thinks that life is happily ever after stories, this video might not be, isn't really meant for you. Anyway, so let's get started. Most kids grow up with Disney, thinking that every story has a happily ever after. There's a prince who sweeps you away and you live as a happy princess forever, happy, Nothing ever goes in your way. Everything's perfect. What's more, it's easy because you just sit back and watch everything happen. You just, like, yes, maybe like Cinderella and Snow White, everyone was a bit mistreated, but otherwise you just sit back, watch it happen. Everything happens. You have a fairy godmother to put on some magic spells for you. You go around, dance a bit, etc., etc. The end. You win. Right? So this is actually the reason I made this video and introduced these two collections of stories because I'm a Disney kid because really, so who isn't? And I, like most kids, grew up with Disney. Now... Imagine how surprised I was when I came across these two books that were oddly similar to the Disney movies. And I realized that the Disney movies are based off of these stories. So that's really the reason I made this video because I wanted to co compare and contrast something that has played a major part in my, in my life so far and how suddenly after I come across two books, I realized that Disney actually twisted the stories quite a bit. Anyways, back to what I was saying earlier. Sadly, life is not like that. Life is not easy. Life does not always end in happily ever afters. Or, and the same deal with fairy tales. Of course, most fairy tales, yes, they do end in some kind of a happily ever after one way or another. But the thing is, the characters need to suffer and work their way there. It's not just sitting back, acting delicate, watching things happen, and then just winning the grand prize. So let's start with my first contrast of Grimm and Anderson's fairy tales versus Disney. Cinderella. She never had a fairy godmother. She, in the... So in, in the Disney movie, she had, had this fairy godmother who appeared out of nowhere. She's crying on the bench because her mother and took her, her stepmother took her sisters and told Cinderella, oh no, you can't go. And now she's crying outside in the garden, right? And then magically this plump old lady, the fairy godmother says, hi, I'm your fairy godmother. I can grant all of your wishes. I have a magic wand, ta-da. And like that, right? But... In the actual Grimm Brothers story, she had bugs and birds working for her. Not a fancy fairy godmother, godmother, bugs and birds. So this, I feel like, proved that not everything in fairy tales need to be clean and fancy. Anyways, in the Disney movie, the prince... He comes along, everyone can't fit their, sh their foot in the shoe, and then Cinderella comes along, her, fit, her foot fits perfectly in the shoe, and ta-da, they're married happily ever after, right? But actually, how it actually worked out was the prince actually took both of her sisters only for one of the birds in this tree that Cinderella planted over her mom's grave. And this bird tells him on page 201 in this book, back again, back again, look to the shoe, the shoe is too small and not made for you. Prince, prince, look again for thy bride, for she's not the true one that sits by thy side. Then he finds that the shoe is filled with blood because this psycho mom 
told her kids, oh, I want to be like super duper rich and I want you to go off and marry the prince now so that your shoe fits, so that your foot fits in the shoe, chop up your, off your toes and heels. And this shoe, when he looks at it, it's overfilling with blood. So really imagine how surprised he is and how grossed out he must have been. Anyway, so that's my contrasting and comparing for Cinderella. And now we'll move on to Beauty and the Beast. So Beauty and the Beast was really my favorite fairy tale because also Beauty's name was Belle. My name was Belle. Belle was for a while my favorite character and still is my favorite Disney character. But in the actual Grimm story, there was a lot more going on than you thought there was. Because in the movie, her dad comes home, Belle has Gaston. Speaking of which, Gaston doesn't even come out in the actual story, so Gaston is completely made up by Disney. So in the mu movie, Belle's, she's, Gaston has proposed to her. She's saying, oh no, I don't want to be his wife. Not me, blah, blah, blah. But then her, fa her father comes home. No, her, the horse comes home. And then she rides into the spooky forest. And then soon comes across the beast castle. Her father's locked up, blah, blah, blah. She exchanges her imprisonment in exchange for her father's imprisonment. So there we go. She finds him. For a while, the beast is just asking her to have dinner with him. She refuses, and they have that relationship thing in it all. Oh, but in the actual story, Beauty actually married the prince at first sight. So her dad comes home, and obviously he's been picking a rose from the prince from the beast's garden, and then the beast threatens him and tells him to bring home the first thing he encounters when he gets home and obviously beauty comes back first and she's the first one he sees and yeah anyways so yeah beauty came along she was really astonished by how nicely the prince treated her in the first place and then she married the prince at first sight and then left after a few years of happy marriage for her eldest sisters, yes, she had. She actually did have two older sisters, and her eldest sister had a kid, or the oldest sister had a wedding, and she goes there, blah, blah, blah. Nothing really important in that, but later they have a, she and the Beast have a kid, and then the second sister decides to get married, and Beauty decides to bring the Beast with her. But apparently, apparently the Beast couldn't be in direct sunlight when he was in his Beast form, or he turned into a dove and couldn't be a lion again for seven years. So, obviously, what else would have happened in the story? He is in direct sunlight, a small ray, and he turns into a dove. Beauty goes after him. Who knows what happens to the kid, which they take along. Of course, Beauty and the Beast completely forget about the kid. And imagine how old the kid must have been at the time. Poor kid. Anyways, who knows what happened to the kid through these years. And she goes along, follows the trail of white feathers that the beast leaves for her. And she talks to the sun, the moon, the stars. Obviously, what else would she be talking to? And then she hears that it's already been seven years and he's a lion again. And now he's fighting a dragon who's actually a princess. Finally, Beauty catches up with the two of them and learns that the lion is under an enchantment and decide, and that enchantment made the lion fall deeply in love with the random princess. Lion marries princess, and Beauty gives away two dazzling dresses and a few chickens and chicks that are made of gold and runs away with the prince, yada, yada, yada. They find their kid back home, and the kid's all grown up, of course. 
that's the end of it. They live happily ever after. But as you can see, once more, she had to go through seven years of traveling. And even if at first she didn't think about it, imagine how hard it must have been if she had to leave her kid for seven years. So imagine how hard that must have been for her. And she's also had to give away three of the of some of the best gifts she's ever received probably because yes beauty is a humble modest person beauty is supposed to be that kind of person but still they're the two most beautiful dresses in the world made from the sun and moon and then there are a few there's a family of chickens that are made of pure gold so really i think that those so they have to be some of the best gifts she's ever received. Anyways, another story that I'll be comparing today is, comparing and contrasting is Snow White. So this time the story isn't that much different from the Disney movie because there isn't really any not kid unfriendly parts. So the part where the kid, Queen sends the Huntsman after her, where Snow White gets away because the Huntsman feels bad. What they didn't include was that the Huntsman actually cuts up, kills a deer and brings the deer to the Queen. Deer heart. Anyways, so the one difference that I really did notice is that the Queen makes three attempts. All three of them which fail at killing Snow White not one for some reason. Anyway, so the first attempt was the queen disguises herself as one of these old ladies who come around door to door asking you if you want to buy anything and she's like, oh, do you want to buy some of these dresses? I made them myself. And when Snow White's trying it on, she pulls the string in the back too tight and Snow White can't breathe and passes out. Then she comes along with a poisoned comb and how? I have no clue how did they get the poison out of her system, you tell me. But she runs the comb through Snow White's hair. Snow White falls down, quite literally dead, until they take the comb out. She's alive! Randomly. And the third is what we're all familiar with, the poison apple, which... Actually, the prince comes along and kisses Snow White, and then how Snow White actually passed out, seeming dead, without actually swallowing this chunk of the apple? I don't know. But the prince comes along, kisses Snow White, and then boom, she's alive because she spits out the chunk of apple and ta-da, I'm alive, back to life. Now what I really did wonder about the queen is if you wanted Snow White to die that badly, if you're such a heartless monster that wants Snow White to die that badly, why wait? Why would you do this poison comb, pulling the drawstring, the drawstring too tight and the poison apple? I mean, wouldn't you have at least made sure she was dead by checking her pulse, checking if she was breathing, anything? Because she's still breathing, right? So why not in the end stab her, right? I mean, it's dark, it's really wrong, but really, if, you, if she really wanted to kill Snow White, shouldn't she have made sure that Snow White was dead before she walked away? So that's that. And the last story that I'm going to be comparing and contrasting today is The Little Mermaid, which I think is actually one of the stories that Disney changed the most because actually, spoiler alert, she doesn't make it. She doesn't make it with the prince. She turns into sea foam at the end. She doesn't actually make it as the prince's wife. Not a happily ever after at all in this time, this time around. Anyways, the prince ran, marries a random neighboring king's daughter. Plus, let's 
talk about the unfriendly part, the kid unfriendly part that Disney w probably wanted to cut out. The witch instead of uh, like Ursula the sea witch instead of taking magic, putting Ariel's voice into a shell. The witch literally chops off Ariel's tongue. And what's more, in this story, Ariel doesn't actually have a name. She's just known as the Little Mermaid. Anyways, and what's more, although she can't speak, another term is that every single step that the mermaid takes feels like knives. It feels, it's, another thing is that her legs feel like they're being stabbed by knives every single time she stands up, takes a step, anything. And it is later on like the last day when she's outside just really feeling depressed that she knows the neighboring king's daughter and the prince are going to get married. She's just feeling depressed and sad about it all and just walking along the beach waiting to see if her grandmother and her sisters would come out one last time so that she could say goodbye to them. So apparently her sisters do come up like every other night and what she realizes is that they don't have this long flowing hair. She, they have cut off their hair and made another deal with the sea witch to, to give all of their hair, even the old grandma's hair, in exchange for this knife that if, that's like an enchanted knife, if, it, if the mermaid stabs the prince with it and sprinkles his blood over her feet, then her feet will merge back together into a mermaid fin and ta-da, she's a mermaid again. She can enjoy her 300 years of life. Anyways, of course, no, she doesn't do it out of love. And instead, she walks into his room, which I really think is an invasion of privacy because really, first off, why aren't the, why isn't there anyone telling her, oh no, you can't go into his room, it's th this is his room, right? I mean, it's just invading his privacy. I mean, it's, it's the prince's room, right? So why not, I mean, just stay out of his room because it's his room where he does his stuff. So really, and it's not even like their brother and sister, husband and wife, or anything. She's just a random girl who watched, washed up on the beach in the most awkward way possible. And when he asks her anything, she just like, she can't talk. And now she's deciding to go into her room, into his room. Anyways, so she doesn't stab him, obviously. She kisses him one last time and then tells the bride good luck, and then she runs out and jumps into the sea just as she turns into sea foam. Very dramatic exit. Anyways, so she turns into sea foam and the end to that story. So really, I think this is actually one of the stories that Disney really did mix up the most because in the Disney movie, none of this happened. I mean, at the end, she actually got to go to their wedding and she never turned into sea foam. She turned into one of Ursula's little slimy algae thingies, the little spirit thingies that are gray and ugly and old and saggy. So she, turned in, she turns into one of those, which actually I think is worse than becoming one of, instead of becoming sea foam because really do you want to spend your life with this old octopus sea witch while you're just surrounded by these ugly sad miserable depressed little things these algae monster spirit blobs so yeah there's that and she also got and in the Disney movie, it was actually Ursula who's trying to hijack the deal. And Ursula comes along and transforms, which really, even in the Disney movie, I wish she hadn't done that because that's cheating. Anyways, 
point is this is actually one of the stories that Disney mixed up the most because I can barely find any similarities in this one. Anyways, that's all the original versus Disney comparisons I have today. Thank you for watching and remember to like and subscribe. Bye.